The Lord be with you. Christ is risen. A very warm welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist on this, the second Sunday of Easter, and a very warm welcome to those who are watching us by live stream also this morning. We begin by singing our opening hymn, number 286, The Strife is O'er. pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, God our Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs>
Collect and readings for the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had need. This is the word of the Lord. Behold how good and pleasant it is to dwell, to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard. Even on Aaron's beard, running down upon the collar of his clothing. It is like the dew of Hermon, running down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has promised his blessing, even life forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing our hymn at the gradual, number 269, Hark 10,000 Voices Sounding.
Gospel of our Saviour Christ, according to St John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus. When they saw the Lord, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Stretch out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and prayers of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus said, do not doubt, but believe, and Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. A few days ago, Carol Cullen sent us a photograph to consider using as the cover photo for the April edition of Monkstown Voice. And for a few days preceding that, we were looking frantically at other photographs and couldn't find anything remotely suitable. The magazine was due to appear on the second Sunday of Easter this morning, but for some strange reason, even though it was still the season of Easter, Easter chickens, eggs, spring flowers, and other Easter imagery just didn't seem to fit the bill. And suddenly her photo appeared and something clicked perfectly into place. Everything about it was just perfect. It spoke of calm and serenity, a juxtaposition of nature and industry, the blue tinges of the sea and sky, the dappled water, the seagulls swimming, and above all else, that sense of new life and fresh beginnings. A picture is often said to be worth a thousand words, and this is certainly true of her photo. Sometimes we need just a little bit something else, if you like, to thoroughly appreciate something in all its beauty. Easter is marked in our churches not only in the breaking open of the Word of God, not only in the breaking of the bread, but through what is visual and beautiful. There is a wonderful contrast in our liturgical presentation of Good Friday through to Easter Sunday morning and on through then the season of Easter. The Good Friday liturgy is marked by appropriate readings, psalms and hymns, a piece of carefully chosen poetry, a reflective address, the proclamation of the cross, a church building with subdued lighting. 
There is an absence of joyful exuberance. No coloured vestments, no flickering candlelight, just the hard wooden cross, the black crepe, the crown of thorns, having central place, and then the words of the final gospel, read from the back of the church, sending us out quietly with perhaps questions unanswered. Easter morning, then, dawns with joy and excitement in abundance, white and gold in the flower arrangements and vestments, joyful responses, the gloria in excelsis making a welcome return, laughter and smiles in abundance. Resurrection joy all around us and hearts filled with hope and light once again. Liturgy, you see, is a vehicle. It's something we use to bring us closer to the divine. But we're also Anglicans, so we also utilize all our senses to mark the changing seasons and use anything we can employ to experience our faith in all its fullness. It is through word and sacrament and senses that we can combine them to dispel fear and doubt. It is through the wonderful richness of our faith expressed in color and delight that helps warm our hearts. Liturgy may be a vehicle to bring us close to the divine, but as mere mortals, we have always needed that little bit extra. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles this morning tells of a group of believers who were of one heart and soul. They claimed ownership not of private possessions, but of something greater that they shared in common. Their testimony of the resurrection spoke of the great grace that was upon them, something far more valuable than houses or lands. The epistle reading from the first letter of John speaks of light and hope, fellowship with the Father, with his Son, and a joy that is complete. Resurrection joy permeates through all of this, and the imagery enriches what we already know. But our gospel, of course, brings us again into contact with Thomas, who, despite hearing the account of the resurrection, finds his heart filled with confusion and doubt. He is just so like us. He is like a liturgy simply read from a piece of text without anything visual. He, like us, if we're honest, needs that little bit more. He needs something to bring the accounts he has heard to life. And our Lord, in his great gentleness and abundant generosity, lets him reach out and touch the wounds of the crucifixion and tells Thomas to doubt no longer but believe. And it's this act of enormous generosity by Jesus that brings Thomas into the company of those who now believe. For us today, there is likewise no shame in reaching out and for asking for that little bit more. Our faith, of course, is something on one hand deeply personal to us, but it's also something we have been given to share of, as a community of believers. Our care of one another is not only in a strictly liturgical setting, but it's also about reaching out with generous and open hearts to something much wider in all our lives. We will never have everything we need simply by reading a text in a room alone. We need the support of others, something else. We need to glimpse the Creator through the created, and we should never shy away from expressing our faith through what is visual and beautiful in this world. Carol's photograph, to some, may be simply something to illustrate a front cover of a parish magazine. In reality, though, if we let it, it speaks volumes about the glory of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, in this wonderful season of Easter. For within that photo are glimpses of the power and the majesty of life and hope themselves. May God bless each one of us as we continue our Easter celebrations. And may we feel, may we, like Thomas, find what we need to truly believe in this life. And let us make this our prayer through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord.
Amen. And let us stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God, God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, we pray for your church in all the world, especially this morning for the work, witness and life of the worldwide Anglican Communion, that the church may firmly follow your way and proclaim your gospel of salvation to all. In our diocese, we pray for Michael Arch Archbishop, we pray for our diocesan cathedral, for its dean and priest scholar, for the parish of Greystones and their rector. We pray also this week for the work of the Church of Ireland Marriage Council, and in the worldwide church, we pray for the Church of the Good Shepherd, West Bank, we remember also our needs, our hopes, our fears in this place. Lord, in your mercy. Hear. Lord God, you desire the well-being of your people and not their destruction. Take all violence from our midst, extinguish hatred from our hearts. Take away from us the passion in us that makes us seek each other's lives. Grant us peace in the world you have given us, so that all may live in harmony to your honour and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord and Father, we pray for this, our own country, for our president, our government, and for our local communities. We remember also the particular needs of all children in our land, and we ask you to bless those who provide education those who run youth programmes, and those who volunteer in Sunday schools. May we all share our responsibility in seeing that the children who have been accepted into the Christian family may receive your grace and become true and valued members of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God of love, we remember this morning those who are ill, and may they find and experience your powerful healing presence. We pray also for those who minister to the sick. Lord, preserve them while waking, guard them while sleeping, that awake they may watch with you, and asleep they may rest in your peace. Lord, in your mercy. We remember in our prayers and thoughts all who have died recently, May we share, O Lord, with them the joy of your heavenly kingdom, and may we rejoice with all your saints who have journeyed through the resurrection to new life in you. 
We remember also those whose anniversaries fall in the week ahead, including George Kennedy, Ernest Mancies, Ben Carnegie, Emily Stewart, and Anne Dyke. We thank you, O Lord, in, for our remembrances of them. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray together. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Remember now the words of our Saviour Christ, who himself says, It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. We sing our offertory hymn, number 431, Lord enthroned in heavenly splendour.
Yours is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all things come from you, and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. Above all, we praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death upon the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded, we remember his passion and death, we celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread.
Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you and lives for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened wide the gate of glory. May we, who share Christ's body, live his risen life. We who drink his cup, bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We join and sing our post-communion hymn number 287, The Whole Bright World Rejoices Now. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.